Give him glory, give him honor, give him adoration. Bless the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Bless the ancient of days. Praise him. Give him glory. Give him adoration. Magnify his holy name. It is of his mercy that we are not consumed. So praise him. Give him glory for being merciful unto you. For preserving you. For standing by you up to this moment. Give him all glory, all honor for all he did for you last year. Give him glory and honor for all he has done in the past Holy Ghost services. Bless his holy name for all the testimonies we have heard. Magnify his holy name. He is worthy to be praised. Is worthy to be adored. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we worship. Alpha, Omega, Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of our praises today, you are worthy of our praises today, hallelujah, Ancient of days, the unchangeable changer, the one who has no beginning and has no ending, the one last year, the one this year, the one in the years to come. Glory be to your holy name. Please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you for all you've done in the past Holy Ghost services. Thank you especially for what you did during your Congress. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Thank you because the siege is over. 
Whether the devil likes it or not, the siege is over. Father, accept our worship in Jesus' name. Tonight, as we gather before you, let your fresh air blow. The kind of miracles we have never done before, Father, perform in all our lives. At the end of it all, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' marvelous name, we have prayed. Amen. Now let someone shout hallelujah. Well, look around you just in case there's someone you have not seen this year and say happy new year to him or her. And uh, since I've not seen many of you this year, I say happy new year to you all. Praise the Lord. Um, before we proceed further, first of all, let us pray for the children of January. Those of you who are born in the month of January, please stand. My Father, my God, I want to commit into your hands all these your children born in January. January is the first month of the year. I pray tonight that for each and every one of these your children, there be a first time kind of miracle in Jesus' name. In every area of their lives, Father, let them come first. First to succeed. First to progress. First to be victorious. First to reach the top. And first to do something extraordinary for God. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. And God bless you. You may be seated. The February Holy Ghost service, if the Lord tarries, will be on the 4th of February. And the theme is miracles. So, <laughs> when the Lord told me that would be the, the theme for February, I jumped for joy. Uh, <laughs> all he said is miracles for February. Glory be to God. So I don't need to uh, advise you to be around for your own miracles. And then before we proceed, the sermon tonight is not going to be very long because um, you're going to need quite some time to pray. Uh, so I need to say one or two things before we get going. I said during the watch my service for those who are here and those of you who are connected that uh, the situation in the world as a whole and Nigeria too has reached a stage where we, sh we shouldn't be talking we should be doing something about bringing a solution I said then that uh, coronavirus had given back to children, but that the children are already beginning to give back to children. I said then that uh, Omicron is not a child, it's a grandchild of coronavirus. 
that we have been dealing with up to now. It is frightening that between December 31st and now, there's already another variety, another grandchild. This one, they call him I Who. <laughs> And they say it's more serious than Omicron. You see, brethren, we're not dealing with a minor problem. And so we don't need to handle it with casual prayers. And so I asked on December 31st, I asked for a thousand volunteers to join me to pray for Nigeria, pray for the world. And uh, I said, I don't want old people because we're going to need people who are healthy and strong. I asked for a thousand volunteers. I'm happy to tell you that by now, I've already got more than 16,000. Um, and I've been having some problems convincing those who are over 70 not to join. These volunteers will be fasting continuously for 72 hours. And we will spend the first 72 hours praying for Nigeria. 72 hours praying for the world. The remaining 72 hours, I will tell the volunteers what they will pray about. I still believe God answers prayers. How many of you believe God will hear our cry? How many of you believe that where science has failed, God will not fail? Then let me hear you shout hallelujah. <laughs> On the 2nd of January, I appeal to those of you who could be called the congregation to please pray for your pastors this year like you've never done before even if it's just one minute a day pray for your pastors they, they pray for you all year round pray for them pray for their family even if all you are going to say is God have mercy on my pastor and his family please pray for them and then, please pray for me. Pray for me, pray for my family. Just one minute a day will be enough. And God will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. How many of you will be praying for us? How many of you will be praying for your pastors and your Jew? Okay, say amen, loud and clear. Now fresh air. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed the man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul he breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul as we go along I will tell you the prayer points when I get to that prayer point, I write it down. Uh, 
I will allow you to pray all your prayers together at the end of the sermon. The young man who spoke before me, I thank God for his life. He has done a great job. Uh, he has defined for us what air is analyze it into oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide and all the etc cetera, etc cetera. he has spoken about what is fresh fresh means new uncontaminated uh, undiluted etc cetera, etc cetera. And he almost began to preach my sermon. <laughs> he did a great job. Let's give the Lord a big round of applause for the very first time that man came in contact with fresh air from God. It was an ordinary mud, ordinary dust of the earth. God formed the man of the dust of the earth. And it was dust until God breathed into his nostril, the breath of life. And all of a sudden, what was useless, helpless, dust, something that you are supposed to walk upon, urinate upon, dig with holes and diggers, became something extraordinarily precious. He became a living soul. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. Matthew 16, verse 26 says, What does he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? The soul is worth more than all the money in the world. All the money in America, all the money in China, all the money in Europe, all the money in the Arab countries, etc., etc. Add all of them together. They are not enough to buy a soul. From nothing, To something so precious that money can buy it. In Job 27, verse 3, Job 27, verse 3, Job was speaking. I said, The breath in me is the Spirit of God in my nostrils. So when you are breathing in and out, is the Spirit of God going in and out? In Job 33, verse 4, Job 33, verse 4, Job said, The Spirit of God has made me the breath of the Almighty has given me life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 7, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7 says, When that breath is withdrawn, dust returns to dust. The moment a man stops breathing, he begins to rot. He becomes useless again. Samuel was a houseboy. 4 Samuel chapter 3, from verse 1 to 9. 4 Samuel chapter 3, from verse 9, 1 to 9. He was a houseboy of Eli. 
Then God breathed on him. He heard the voice of the giver of life. And all of a sudden, a houseboy began to change. And very soon, he became a kingmaker. In 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1, he became the first kingmaker of Israel. And he went further. By the time you get to 1 Samuel chapter 15, from verse 16 to 29, 1 Samuel 15, from verse 16 to 29, he wasn't just a kingmaker, he became a king remover. He became so mighty that a king tore his dress. And he turned around and said to the king, your kingdom is torn. He started as nothing. But the breath of God changed him to someone extraordinary some years ago I went to visit an African country and I wanted to have an appointment with the head of state one way or the other I got the appointment and they warned me this is Monday morning this is the time for cabinet meeting. Don't take more than 15 minutes of the president. And I said, yes, sir. I got in. We started talking. I wasn't the one taking the time of the president. It was the president taking my time. After one hour, one of his aides came in probably to signal to him that the cabinet is waiting. He turned to the aide and said, bring us a pot of tea and two cups. So we sat down there, and you know what we are talking about, you have a rough idea, drinking tea. Finally, hours later, somebody was asking another fellow, who is that fellow delaying the cabinet? And somebody answered and said, it's one pastor from somewhere in Africa. And the other one said, pastor? It's not even a bishop. I believe the almighty God is going to breathe on someone today. And you are going to become very, very special. Your prayer number one, write it down. Father, please breathe on me. And make something significant of my life. Breathe on me. Make something significant out of my life. You can put in bracket. Breathe on me. Don't let me die ordinary. Number two, fresh air can mean to you that not only is your siege over, it's going to be over permanently. In Exodus chapter 2, 
from verse 23 to 25. Exodus chapter 2 from verse 23 to 25. The Bible describes for us the situation of the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. Things were rough. Things were hot. They were laboring without anything to show for it. They could die, and nobody in the government paid any attention. Then, in Exodus chapter 12, from verse 1 to the end, Exodus 12 from verse 1 to the end, their siege was over. The heat was gone. Freedom came. They began to breathe the breath of the fresh air of deliverance, of liberty, of prosperity, because they became wealthy. But the enemy tried to bring them back into captivity. Exodus chapter 14. You can read it from verse 1 to 20. Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 20. The Bible said they looked back and they saw the entire army of Pharaoh pursuing them. And they knew the implication. They were about to be taken back into captivity. But then God did something extraordinary. God breathed again. Exodus chapter 15, from verse 8 to 11. Exodus 15, 8 to 11. The Bible says it is when God breathed that the ocean parted away. And the children of Israel were able to pass through on dry ground. God breathed and he made a way. By the end of the story, if you look at Exodus chapter 14 from verse 21 to 28, Exodus 14 from 21 to 28, you discover that when God breathed this time, the siege was over permanently for the children of Israel, permanently. Now, for you to understand this aspect fully, let me explain something to you. Those of you who have had the opportunity of traveling abroad, you probably have noticed that if you are flying from London, shall we say, to somewhere in America, the journey will probably take eight and a half hours. But if you are returning from America to London, from the same place to the same place, the journey will take, at times, a little less than eight hours, the same distance, the same plane. What causes the difference? The difference is caused that because when you are traveling from the UK to America, the wind is blowing against the plane. They call it headwind. It pushes back the plane. When you are returning from America to Britain, the same wind now is blowing behind you, behind the plane, is pushing forward the plane, increasing as it were 
the speed. Now that's what happened at the Red Sea. When the wind was blowing behind the children of Israel, the Red Sea parted. They walked through on dry ground. As soon as they got to the other side, God said to the wind, change direction. And he changed direction, and the sea came together again and drowned all the enemies. Write down your prayer number two. Father, let your wind blow in my favor. Let what had been head wind become tail wind for me from this moment onward. So that my siege will be over permanently. That's your prayer number two. Point number three. In Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10, Ezekiel 37 from verse 1 to 10, which my son referred to earlier on. There was this valley of dry bones. And the man of God, Ezekiel, was asked by God, these bones, can they live? And the man of God said, God, my faith can't carry that. They are too dead. They have become bones. They are not just dry bones. The Bible said, Lo, they were very dry. God told the man of God, prophesy, prophesy to the bones. Bones come together. He prophesied, the bones come together. Flesh covered the bones. The flesh covered the bones, but they were still dead until the wind blew. And suddenly, dry bones came alive. When fresh wind blows, hope is restored. Opportunities that have been lost forever are reversed. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4. He says, if you are still connected to the living, if you are still breathing, there is hope for you. He said, because a living dog is better than a dead lion. Not too long ago, I preached a sermon entitled, Let Everything That Has Breath Praise God. That if you are still breathing, praise God. And why? Because Because if that breath is still going in and out, in and out, it means there is hope for you. It means God has not finished with you yet. It means God can still reverse the irreversible. In Romans chapter 4, verse 17 to 21, Romans 4, 17 to 21, the Bible referred to the womb of Sarah as dead. The body of Abraham, dead. But God paid a, a visit and breathed on both. And the, the dead womb came back to life. The dead body came back to life. And those who felt that they can never again be fruitful, suddenly discovered 
that there is a God who can change sorrow to laughter. The wind of God is going to blow on someone today. And their hope will begin to rise. Now, the Bible says, in that same Ezekiel 37, from verse 11 to 14, Thank you, Father. Uh, the Lord wants me to tell you. He wants me to tell everybody. Uh, maybe I'm being selfish, claiming it for the redeemed Christian Church of God. But he asked me to tell everybody who cares to pay attention that the number of twins that will born this year will be more than the singles. In Ezekiel 37, verse 11 to 14, Ezekiel 37 from verse 11 to 14, the Bible says, God opened the graves, brought us out the dead, brought us the dead out and the spirit of God in us caused us to live again there is a God, the God of all flesh not only can he raise the dead and thank God for the testimonies we have heard he can reverse the irreversible he can do something that will cause even the man with the greatest faith to say only the Almighty can do this. I don't know if you had the testimony yet. I was a daughter of mine that the doctor said there's no way she could ever have a child relatives of the husband told her stop worrying yourself your wife has no womb you know the test you know the story and then god spoke he said there's someone here he said you have no womb but you are going to produce a set of twins she knew she was the one so she grabbed it And she became pregnant. Went to the hospital. The doctor checked and said, I don't know what is happening. You're not supposed to be pregnant. But I see a baby in you. She said, no, not a baby. <laughs> My father said, twins. Cut a long story short. Went back three months later. The doctor said, well, yes, we can see twins. She went abroad. Because they, 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 they don't want to, anything to tamper with the baby to deliver. And they said, no, we don't want her to go through labor. Let this thing be by cesarean operation. So they put her to sleep and brought out the twins. And the husband told the doctor, I don't want any more child. This just seal the womb. We're okay now. When she woke up and everybody around were looking at her, what's going on? And she said, well, where, where are my children? They said, your children are over. But the surgeon said, I've performed thousands of operations. This is the first time I'm bringing out a set of twins where there is no womb. I'm sure you had the testimony before, at least those of you who are old. That's several years ago, almost 20 years ago now. But that's not the miracle now. I got a phone call from her not too long ago. Daddy, I want to bring my twins to greet you. I said, ah, good, bring them. I've not seen them for a long time. And she came. And I was expecting the twins who by now should be in the university. 
that she was carrying brand new set of twins. The original ones are in the university. God, after years, brought out another two from somebody that they said had no womb, from somebody who had not menstruated at all. There is a God who can reverse the irreversible. Write down your prayer and say, Father, Breathe on me. Restore to me every blessing I have lost. And make the blessings double. Restore to me every blessing that I have lost. Every opportunity that I have lost. And make them double. Then, point number four. Like that young man mentioned, breathing on me can be the beginning of Holy Ghost power. In John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23, John chapter 20, from verse 21 to 23, Jesus Christ said to the disciples, He said, as the Father sent me, so send I you. And then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. He said, the breath I'm breathing is the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible says, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, He said, you shall receive power. When the Holy Ghost is come upon you, you shall receive The word used for power there, according to Bible scholars, is the word used for dynamite. Not ordinary power, the dynamite kind of power. The kind of power that can blow mountains out of the way. The kind of power that can shatter a rock. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. So that just like the Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ, according to Acts chapter 10, verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Fresh air is saying to you and I, from now on, we will receive power. Power to go about doing good. Power to begin to raise the dead. You heard the testimony of that young man. There are others. As a matter of fact, I was expecting quite a few of them who had raised the dead since the last time we met. By the next time we meet, you would have raised the dead too. But when he's talking about fresh air, he's talking about peculiar power. You know, in Mark chapter 19, verse 11 to 12, sorry, Acts chapter 19, from verse 11 to 12, 
The Bible said God performed special miracles by the hand of Paul so that from his body aprons and handkerchiefs were taken to the sick. The sick got healed and the demons left them. Each time I hear the testimonies of the handkerchiefs that we have blessed, the oil that we have blessed, being used to perform miracles, I thank God. But I have good news for you. Very soon, you will take that handkerchief and get all your members who were not present and ask them to come and lay their own handkerchief on that handkerchief and the power will be multiplied. Yeah. I am believing God for you that as you breathe in the power of God, the fresh air of God tonight, there will be so much power in you that the impossible will become easily possible. I'm sure you remember the story of a girl, of a sister who was pregnant in America and the baby was too big to come naturally and when the doctors wanted to consider her for operation, they tested the blood and they discovered that she had a very peculiar blood that if she's ever caught, she will bleed to death that her blood can never clot, her blood can never stop flowing. So they had a problem. What do we do? If we open her up, she will bleed to death and we will save the baby. If we don't open her up, the baby can't come out because she's too big. And the mother came. And I prayed. And the Lord said, anoint two handkerchiefs for her. I didn't know why it is two, but I did. She traveled to America, tied, uh, gave the daughter one of the handkerchiefs. By the following morning, the handkerchief had disappeared. They searched everywhere they couldn't find it. So she said, well, thank God I have two. So the second one, she tied it so tightly around the hand of the daughter that anybody who's going to remove this one will probably need to do something special. To cut a long story short, you know the testimony. The doctors have said we can no longer wait. By tomorrow morning, 10 a.m., we are going to perform an operation in order to save the baby. There's nothing else we can do. Well, the baby arrived at 9 a.m before they can perform the operation. I am believing God for you after this fresh air. Your handkerchiefs will perform extraordinary miracles. So your prayer number four. Father, please breathe on me. so that I can be empowered to overflowing. Breathe on me so I can be empowered to overflowing. Number five. Fresh air could mean second wind. I explained that one to those who came to the Holy, uh, Holy Communion yesterday. I will explain it again because of those of you who are not around. I said, when you are running a long race, a marathon, 
Occasionally, you get to a stage where you are so tired, you feel you could not continue. You almost stop. But as you are breathing heavily, somehow, a power you didn't know you had in you, a kind of reserve, will surge forward. And then you begin to run again, and you run stronger and faster, and finish the race successfully. That new surge of energy, we call it getting a second wind. I'm believing God for someone who is about to give up. Tonight, you will get a second wind. Maybe I give you one or two examples very quickly on that. In Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, Joshua 1 from verse 1 to 8, God made some tremendous promises for Joshua. Nobody will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. That's what God told him. And then by the time, I mean, by the time we go to Joshua chapter 6, you see him performing very well. Joshua chapter 6. He was able to lead the people. They made just one shout, and the wall of Jericho fell. But then came Joshua chapter 7. And we found Joshua on his face because a small city called Ai has defeated the whole nation of Israel. He didn't know what to do next. He was flat on his face. But then came Joshua chapter 8. You can read the whole story. And God gave him a second wind. And from that moment onward, Joshua never failed again. And then in Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. Thank you, Father. The fellow concerned will understand. The Lord said, you started a project, you abandoned it. You started it the second time, you abandoned it. You started it the third time, you abandoned it. Daddy asked me to tell you, start it again now. It will no longer be abandoned. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, the Almighty God, thank you, Father. Daddy said there's someone listening. He said the only way to save your life is to give you two brand new lungs. He said you can receive it right now. In Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11, the Almighty God told Peter, from now on, you'll be catching men. No more fishing. And Peter was doing great. By the time you got to Matthew chapter 16, from verse 13 to 19, Matthew 16, from verse 13 to 19, he was getting revelation directly from God. But then came Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75. Matthew 26, from verse 69 to 75, when he failed very badly. But then, in John chapter 21, from verse 1 to 19, John 21, from verse 1 to 19, he got fresh air. 
he got a second wind and from then on it was upward ever downward never so you're going to pray your prayer number five father breathe on me give me a second chance Give me a second wind so that I will never fail again. That brings me to point number six. Fresh air could mean adding petrol to fire. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. He said, when the Lord comes, he was going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. So fresh air could mean you have had a dose of power before. Like Peter had in Acts chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 that my son mentioned earlier on. In the day of Pentecost, power came. And with that first dose, Peter was able to go into action. His destiny was activated. He preached a single sermon I want 3,000 souls. With that single dose, it was powerful enough to make the lame walk. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 11. Acts 3, from verse 1 to 11. You know the story of the lame man by the beautiful gate after which he preached another sermon and he won 5,000 souls. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 4. But then, in Acts chapter 4, from verse 23 to 31, Acts 4, 23 to 31, the wind blew again a second time. The house was shaken. Peter got a second dose of power. And with that, he was able to preach yet another sermon. And he won multitudes. Second dose of power. Ah, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell somebody, he said, relax. That which is frightening you has been blown away. <laughs> oh, Lord, thank you, Father. Daddy asked me to tell you a story. Some of you know the story of a man and his wife that came to the church in the Butemeta. And after some time, we didn't see the wife again. And so we followed up and asked, What's the problem? And she said, uh, since the day she came to the church, she had not been able to fly again. She was a witch. Couldn't fly again. 
not coming back to your church. And not allow me to fly again to meetings at night. When the Lord asked me to tell you that story, because he said, there's someone here. He said that all the witches in your family are grounded from now on. In 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 19 to 21, 1 Kings 19 from verse 19 to 21, Elijah threw his mantle on Elisha. That was the first time Elisha had a brush with the power of God, a breath of the Almighty. But then came Second Kings chapter two, from verse nine to fifteen. Second Kings chapter two. Oh. Well, let me say amen to this before I tell you. The Lord said before the end of the first quarter of this year. I will blow into you a miracle so big. For the rest of the year, you will see things you are dreaming. In 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, Elisha had a taste of fresh air. The Bible said Elijah went up by a wild wind to heaven. And all of a sudden, Elisha, who was a son of a prophet, became the prophet. Within a day, he reached a height that he could only dream about. You're going to pray prayer number six. And we are going to use modern language. You're going to say, Father, breathe on me. Give me a booster of your power tonight. Give me a booster of your power tonight. That I might reach the top quickly and easily. Give me a booster, a second dose of your power that I may reach the top quickly and easily. Number seven. Fresh air could mean keeping the fire burning permanently. The Almighty God said in Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 13, He said, The fire on His altar must never go out. God is saying that those of you who are children of the Almighty God, number one, you must never backslide. And in the name that's above every other name, you will never backslide. Number two, 
He's saying, those of you who have been hot, you will never become cold. You won't lose your fire. Thank you, Father. I hope you are paying attention to all God is saying tonight. The sermon may be brief, but to me it's loaded. Daddy says, my sheep hear my voice, but few hear my whisper. And he described the whisper as the small, still voice. He asked me to tell someone here tonight, from tonight onward, you'll be hearing my whisper. He said, the fire must not go out. Why? Because if the fire goes out, even if you reignite it, the period between the fire going out and a new fire being lit can be full of danger. As long as the fire is burning, you can keep flies away. If the fire goes out, flies can move in. And you know flies is a symbol of demons. You know what happened in Judges chapter 16 from verse 18 to the end. Judges 16, from verse 18 to the end. When the fire of Samson went out, immediately the enemy moved in. They plucked out his eyes. They bound him. They took him to the house of their idols. And they asked him to be singing and dancing for them. Anything that will send you back to the witch doctors will never happen to you in Jesus' name. The danger with backsliding, with the fire going out, is that the wound may heal, but the scar will remain. You will never backslide in Jesus' name. Your fire will never go out. But do you know that fire needs fresh air to keep burning? Fresh air must come to keep the fire going. It's enough, it's good enough to have the fire burning that you must keep on supplying it with fresh air. In Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8, the Bible talked about the choice of the original deacons, including Stephen, Philip, and others. And he said one of their qualifications is that they must be full of the Holy Spirit. They were full of the Holy Spirit. And yet, the apostles still laid hands on them. They gave them a fresh dose of fire.
No human being is going to lay hands on you today. But God himself will do so. I've told you this story before. I'm about to close. I told you it will be quick. And we went to America to attend Kenyatigan camp meeting way back in 1979. Quite a few of us left from Nigeria. We didn't go together, but we met there. And when I saw what was going on, naked demonstration of the power of God, miracles of all kinds. I've been, we've been having miracles at home, but I'm talking of, well, something special. I made up my mind, I must see this man before I go back to Africa. They told me it's not possible. You can't see him. I said, ah. <laughs> I didn't come all the way from Africa without a touch of fresh air. Anyway, I got the appointment. When my colleagues heard that I've gotten the appointment, they jump on the bad wagon. And we went in to see the man of God. Almost as usual. And they gave us 15 minutes. And we got in, the man of God turned to us. Yes, what can I do for you? I'm the one who arranged the meeting. But those who followed me started talking. One said, sir, I want to be distributing your tapes in Africa. Okay. Another one said, I want to be distributing your books. Okay. Another one said, I want to be distributing your magazines. Okay. Finally, he turned to me. Young man, what do you want? I said, sir, Everything in you that makes you you, that's what I want. He said, what? I repeated myself. I was shocked. So he called for his secretary. This one is asking for books, give him books. This one wants tape, give him tapes. This one wants magazine, Give him a magazine. And they left. And then he turned to me and said, Young man, kneel down. And I knelt down. I still, for, I still remember the day as if it were yesterday. And I saw him coming towards me. I saw his two hands coming as if suddenly the two hands became very big. Lay those two hands on my head. That's all I remembered. When I woke up, I was on the floor. He was kneeling down before me, beside me, praying furiously. By the time I got up, I knew I got what I wanted. Somebody is going to get something that will keep your fire burning forever. And so you're going to pray prayer number seven. Father, breathe on me. Keep the air fresh. And never let your fire go out in my life. Never let the fire go out in my life. Conclusion. When 
Peter was in prison. In Acts chapter 12, from verse 5 to 11. Acts 12, from verse 5 to 11. And the angel of the Lord came in, and his yokes dropped off. And he got up, and the doors were opening on their own accord. When he got out of prison, he breathed fresh air. And his fire never went out from that moment onward. Brethren, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus Christ said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man will hear my voice, I will come in. You can shut out the fresh air. If you lock your door and you refuse to open the door, even if the wind is blowing outside, it might not be able to come in. The Bible says, if you want to hear his voice, harden not your heart. Some of us have hardened our heart. We know what we are doing is wrong. Each time we hear the word of God, something tells you, you need to change. But we harden our heart. When you shut the door, against the one who can bring in fresh air. He will not force you. He will respect your free will. But one day you will realize you have missed something serious. The altar call I'm making tonight is not for those who have not given their life to Jesus Christ alone. It's for those of us who claim that we are born again and we are persistently doing things contrary to the will of God. It's knocking at the door today open the door to him and fresh air will flow in so if you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to reconcile with Jesus Christ before I count up to 10 come and stand before the altar we will pray for your salvation we pray for your reconciliation with God. And then when others are praying for fresh air, you'll be free to pray too. And God will answer. I'm counting now. One. And I know some of you are very far away, so you need to move now and begin to come. If you shut the door against fresh air, it won't be able to come in. Open the door of your heart to him and fresh air will flow in. Two. In Jesus' 
mighty name we have prayed. And so, Father Almighty, we thank you for an opportunity you have given us for fresh air. Thank you, thank you, thank you. For these people who have decided to come forward, to open the door of their hearts to you so that fresh air can flow in. Please receive them. Have mercy on them. Forgive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. And let them remain forever members of your family. And every backslider who has decided to come back home, Father, receive. Don't let them ever backslide again. And Father Almighty God, I pray. From this moment onward, any time they cry unto you, you answer them by fire. Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who are in front, I want to rejoice with you. Because from now, by God's grace, I'll be praying for you. And I'm sure God will begin to send miracles your way. Now, so I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. Uh, those of you who are still on the way, you are not late. Just keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. You are not late yet. Um, the rest of us, we will wait for you. You have to, the counselors will have to attend to you first so you can get out of the way before the rest of us will begin to pray to God. Now, well, is the band there? Well, we can have some worship song while we wait for these our brothers and sisters. Now, you've already written down your prayer points. I appeal to you in the name of the one who gave us the theme, Fresh Air, that you cry to him tonight with all your heart. If you don't like all the prayer points, at least you'll find one or two that you like. To me, I want God to make something out of my nothingness. I want him to breathe on me again so that out of nothing, something great can come. I want my siege to be permanently over, irreversibly over. So that it will become absolutely impossible for me to ever backslide. I want a restoration of everything that I've lost. Opportunities that I missed. I want God to bring all of them back. I want a taste of his power like never before. You see, there are some people all over the world who will not believe unless they see signs and wonders. I want not just one dose, I want a second dose. I want the fire of the Almighty God in my life to keep burning like never before. To burn brighter and brighter day by day. I want a second wind. I want to be able to start afresh so that I can continue this race with strength, with power, with energy, going higher and higher day by day. All these are available through fresh air, available tonight. So I'm going to ask you, at least for 20 minutes, to cry to
to the Almighty God. The, 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 the altar is open if you want to come. If you want, you can use the aisles. Forget everybody now. It's you and God, okay? It's, it's you who know what you want from God. So let's go ahead. Let's cry to the Almighty God. Let's pray with all our heart. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Father. Thank you, Lord. Uh, uh, let us begin to bring our prayers to a close. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Savior. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Fresh wind from heaven. We blow on all of you. Your life will become significant. You will not die unknown. You will become a mighty vessel unto honor in God's hand. By the power of the Holy Spirit, your siege is over permanently. Every opportunity you have lost shall be restored to you. The great I am that I am we blow blessings back to you. It will reverse all the irreversibles for you. It will give you a second chance. Where you feel weak, it will make you strong again. Where you feel tired, it will recharge your strength. Every obstacle in your way, it will blow them off. He will give you a taste of his power. He will anoint you to overflowing. The fire of God in your life will never go out. And even things you should have asked for that you forgot, it will give unto you. Yeah. It shall be well with you. Yeah. And it will keep death far away from you. Yeah. You will keep living until you reach your goal. The praise of God shall continually be in your mouth. Yeah. 
So shall it be. Yeah. Receive fresh anointing. Yeah. Breathe fresh air. Yeah. Come out of prison today. And you will serve God like never before. Even your shadow will raise the dead. It shall be said of you, only God can do this. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Ah, let somebody shout hallelujah. And we can go back to our seats. God bless you.